Welcome friends. Uh, we are continuing IBM Integration Buzz tutorial series. In the last tutorial, I have created a simple web services. For example, employee service. I define get employee details and I created a employee type uh, in this design palette which contain name, city, ID. So here also in the schema definition you can notice employee request and response we have used in this interface section. And we have implemented it using a mapping node. This is a graphical mapping we have assigned to values and we have mapped from request to response and we have tested. Today uh, I will uh, start my journey in ESQL which is a uh, extension of uh, you know uh, SQL language which giving a very high performance programming uh, interface to write programming and doing the transformation and logic implementation inside message broker. So we have So uh, this ESQL is uh, is a programming language uh, for the message broker. This is the extension of the SQL. So we can uh, you know write conditional check. We can define a function and we can declare variables. So we can have a lot of other extension provided by message broker. Today we'll discuss or uh, utilize one XML parser. There are um, broadly three kind of parser. One is uh, normal XML parser, and another one is XML uh, NSC, and one is XML uh, namespace parser. So this we are trying to uh, use today. It is very high performance and a uh, lot of capabilities. I will explain in detail about uh, different parser and what are the pros and cons. But I will try to introduce about uh, to you about this ESQL in a development and try to go baby step ahead because there are not plenty of information available over the internet so you have to uh, go through this IBM documentation so my uh, agenda is to cover step by step so you can uh, declare a variables you can manipulate different type how you can define a string integer date format and how you can do if else condition how you can write functions so all this st stuff I would like to cover slowly step by step so you get a good handle on in the ESQL so that it will be helpful for your development purpose. So without uh, much further ado, let us start creating uh, our first compute node. So I drag and drop and join this compute now. I double click it. So this is the empty, uh, you know, slate. Uh, so if you are looking the first time, don't get confused. Don't manipulate too much about it. So this is the main function and where we are going to use. So this will be automatically generated or created by us. So as I said, we'll go slowly. And this is copy message header and uh, entire message. Step two are a commenter. This uh, two, you know, uh, dashes means comment. And it, it creating this function in this fashion, main returns boolean, whether this is executed, success or failed. So this is begin of this function. This is end. This uh, seems a little bit cobble programming to me. So without further ado, we can uh, start our journey. So what I want to do, I want to declare a variable in the initial and this is very case sensitive. So you ensure that you have followed this case sensitive properly. So if you declare, we have this kind of variables, bit, blob, boolean, uh, corrected, all this you can feel a little bit familiar if you are using a SQL statement, otherwise it would be a little bit uh, alien to you. Okay, so we'll try to use most of them slowly. So I have defined a variable, for example, character. We have another variable I will define, declare city. That is also character we have. Then we have declare employee ID. That will give integer, okay? So we have three variable. And let us give some uh, predefined or default values. For that assigning, we can use set name is equal to here if you give double quote it will uh, try to complain to you okay let me save it so it will give a warning saying that it is cannot be identified so it is an identifier so instead of using double quote better to use a single quote for string manipulation so that warning will go away steep 
set city uh, airport is nearby so you heard some buzzing sound because of airplane sorry for that so now let's get started so we define and initialize two variables steve and new york and let us uh, initialize employee id uh, one two three okay so, and also i have a touch upon a different parser we have so for example what uh, the output message whatever we see is output root and input message whatever we are getting it is available inside the input root so uh, let us initialize with some static values whatever we created in this output root because our signature is also in this case uh, is interface is taking this you know uh, city right uh, this name city uh, id so both the request and response are same so i'll try to uh, hard code and return it so that it is working or not step by step we'll build on top of it okay so set we have to define output uh, root dot if you do and if you press control and uh, space you always get the auto completion uh, stuff over here now let me choose this parser so we have three parser for xml so i will use this xml ncs so most of the time use it i'll create some other tutorial to explain about the differences so here so uh, we have to use uh, get employee detail this is the message what i, I can before that Okay, not this comment from I, I'm not you know copying pasting so it won't work but still I, I can test it so let me test it hopefully I, I'd like to show you that uh, in incoming message so that you can you know access that from one so let me create it okay so this is the message I'm talking about this is what I'm accessing in the server side you will get em get employee details response or we can directly access this employee response over there so it, it depends I'll, in the wstl it is always xml web service are a little bit uh, confusing so both are correct whether you pass this uh, request or response but uh, never mind so this is the way we can uh, access so let me copy into the notepad and i'll try to use a later point of time to show you thing now i am constructing the response message okay this is the request i'll explain a while that how to access it so let me stop my recording uh, recording means this is okay so in the output node so dot yeah so get employee details oh, there is no need to use because this won't be available in the output so this we can use or we can directly use this response it is up to us okay both are correct but it is uh, this will be more appropriate so we can create then it will come this uh, employee response this element name will be defined in wsdl file okay and this is our schema what we define so inside this response we'll get name city and thing so let me define name is equal to so the variable we have assigned name now control c control v control v so name we can have city we can have this time oh, it would be employee id the variable name is different so id okay i have created id so here let me change to my variable name city and this employee capital id okay this is case sensitive ensure that okay there is some problem in the first place what it is complaining i think this name we can't take uh, that is probably the reason uh, let us change something to employ name I think this would uh, fix the error okay uh, I have to define it I have did one silly mistake for setting any variable you have to use set always so you can't directly start and assigning the variable like other programming language the set keyword is really essential 
in almost all the programming languages of our you can define directly variable and assign the you know data now it should be fine so this is a little bit cryptic to beginning so all this namespace and all this coming but uh, fortunately these are coming from the you know um, autocomplete so you no need to memorize as such so even though it would be very lengthy long it, it should be good right so there is no need to be panic so i think name city i think here we can give uh, employee id so it will be assigned itself now the output node will come so let's uh, record and test it whenever i click here this is deploying because any new change will be deployed onto the server and the message will be popped up so if i this is a message but i'm not accessing anything so you won't see any of this information from a request to response and we can click this send okay this is let's see our default values come up or not okay great see this uh, body details response employee response and uh, this uh, name city id is generated and whatever the value we have assigned it is coming so that's wonderful thing we can test using soap ui as well so using soap ui also if you take this is the response it will be received by other clients so you can hand over to other your java team members or any other people who are looking for web services so they can access this and they know what to be do with that so let us try to access this id variables and uh, now we hard coded right we have in one two three i want to receive the id from this five six seven eight and but if you remember we have to access this uh, after namespace uh, this uh, after body all this data will be stored in uh, you can think is, it is available in the xml ncsc so you have to access get employee details then uh, employee request then id to access this value okay so let's do that let's stop this recording of this code now double click it okay so here uh, whenever we are setting right we can in we can create input root dot um, control space xml dot as I mentioned get employee details that's what you should use uh, let me open in my notepad to show you this get employee details okay then we should have employee request okay then we should have id right and this will be stored in this variable employee id and this employee id is again mapped here so you have done transformation very efficiently quickly so you don't need to worry so let's test it uh, real quick okay so let me change this value to some seven nine eight okay some random values okay now what we receive okay so whatever the request we passed so that is available inside this response so this even simple concept is tremendously important if you're able to get the value what is uh, re sent by request and you can do any kind of operation on top of it and you can pass to the target right end to end is working now it is up to you to you know play with the different variables different types and uh, we'll i'll slowly show you slowly how we can put additional if condition while for loop so we, we can get there okay so thanks very much for watching this videos if you like uh, kindly like the video or kindly subscribe so that uh, if you do that, then only I'll get a little bit motivation to create more of this kind of videos. Then I'll think that people are interested to watch this video and they are learning and getting some value out of it, right? So please help spread the word wherever you like. Let me know if you have any challenges in the comment. I'll reply each and every message for the CEO. Okay. Thanks. Have a wonderful day ahead. Bye-bye.